Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to the channel. Or if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe, it really helps the channel out. And today I'm talking to you about the very final episode of Season 1 of Lower Decks, entitled No Small Parts. What an episode this was to round out the season. We had plenty of uh, in-jokes and references from the Exocomp to <laughs> the Packlids to not one, but two appearances by legacy Star Trek characters in the form of, spoiler alert, Riker and Troy aboard the US Titan. What an episode this was, and let's take a look through it. So right off the bat, we get a reference to an old original series episode called The Return of the Archons, uh, which sends the Cerritos to Beta 3, where there's a whole bunch of kind of ye olde timey people um, worshipping a computer named Landru. This old original series episode uh, with Kirk and Spock, and they're referencing Kirk and Spock, and they uh, Ransom brings up on his pad a, uh, a nice little picture there <laughs> which shows them in their animated form, back from the animated series, and apparently these guys have gone back to worshipping Landru again, and they say, well, why couldn't you just listen to Kirk in the first place, and Ransom makes a bit of a joke, sort of saying, oh, I, I like visiting planets back from the old TOS era, and, and Freeman's sort of like, well, TOS era? What's the TOS? Oh, those old scientists. So I thought that was kind of a clever little kind of uh, uh, reworking of the uh, original series acronym. And everyone beams back to the ship, except Boimler and Mariner are left behind, having a little conversation while they hand out some crayons to some of the local young kiddies there on the planet. And uh, Boimler fesses up that he knows that Captain Freeman is Mariner's mum. And uh, she doesn't take it too well. She's saying, like, shut up, shut up. Um, don't say anything. Like, I don't want it out there. Like, shut your mouth. And meanwhile, they're trying to call Boimler on his communicator, and the people on the bridge are hearing the whole conversation. Everybody hears it. There's no more secrets. The cat is out of the proverbial bag. And everybody knows that Mariner and Freeman are mother and daughter. Next we find Captain Dayton and the former crew of the Rubido who have been given a nice new California class ship in the form of the USS Solvang. I love the joke with um, Captain Dayton sitting in the captain's chair and the plastic <laughs> is kind of half peeled off the screen on her uh, on her chair armrest and she says oh who who half peeled the the sticky uh, the sticky off my uh, screen she wants it to be pristine and unscratched um, I thought that was funny and I laughed out loud in that moment because everybody knows whenever you get a new piece of technology it's always got that little bit of plastic on the screen which you kind of you want it to keep it nice and you inevitably end up peeling that plastic off but while it's on there it's all nice and special so I had to laugh at this little joke about this brand new ship they're on. And they're exploring a sector of space and suddenly are attacked and destroyed by an unknown enemy of incredible power. And the ship that's attacked, the Solvang, is a uh, very souped up ship, lots of firepower, and it belongs to, uh, you might remember them from season two, I think it was, of Next Generation, a race called the Packlids. They were a bit slow, they were sort of simple, maybe not the sharpest tool in the shed, so to speak, uh, in terms of alien races go, but they wanted to improve their ship, and it seems like they've scavenged all manner of vessels throughout the Alpha Quadrant to, uh, give their ship somewhat of an upgrade, which has now totally destroyed the USS Solvang and all of her crew. Meanwhile, back on the uh, Cerritos, Tendi has got a new job. She's uh, kind of a liaison with a new recruit in the form of an exocomp, which is kind of like a little hovering droid that we saw in season six of Next Generation in the episode, The Quality of Life, where uh, there was sort of like a semi-sentient robot thing going on. Data was kind of trying to uh, champion its sort of uh, rights, I think it was. It was a bit hokey, if I remember correctly. I remember watching this episode of Next Generation with this exocomp droid. I think it was kind of trying to be like, sort of like this, the uh, R2-D2 of, uh, of Star Trek. But it unfortunately just kind of came off a bit hokey. and You could kind of tell it was being hovered around the room on a bit of fishing wire. And it, it was never the best character or uh, episode of Next Generation, I don't think. But still, the exocomp gets a return in this episode of Lower Decks. Now, since the whole crew now knows that uh, Mariner and Freeman are mother and daughter, everybody is accosting uh, poor old Mariner in the hallway, 
special request. There's a guy that stops her uh, to give her design tips on the uh, captain's yacht, who is a real conspiracy theorist. He says Wolf 359 was an inside job, changelings aren't real, and the Dominion War didn't happen. So, <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of a uh, a bit of a nut job, it would seem. Meanwhile, it appears there's a uh, promotion in the works for someone to uh, move over to the USS Sacramento. And Boimler, being as ambitious as he is, uh, wants the job. However, with this newfound information that the crew now all knows that she's the captain's daughter now and everyone's coming to her with presents and uh, just getting in her face about it, she thinks maybe she might take the promotion. That way she can get a clean slate off the ship and a bunch of people who don't know her and don't know who her mum is. And it might work out better for her being anonymous again. Meanwhile, Tendi's chatting with the Exocomp, who has now chosen a name. Uh, and that name is Peanut Hamper. <laughs> um, apparently it's supposed to be mathematically perfect. Um, Tendi loves it. Meanwhile, Boimler and Mariner are fighting it out as to who's going to get this promotion that's on offer at the Sacramento. They're going to see Ransom, they're kind of trying to <laughs> sweet talk him into who gets the promotion. And the Cerritos arrives at the uh, distress call made by the Solvang, only to find it blown apart and to be attacked themselves by this uh, heavily souped up Packled ship. And after scanning the Packled ship, Boimler discovers that there's about 30 different races that make up their ship. They've been clearly been busy since uh, season two or whatever it was of Next Generation, putting together uh, a somewhat more souped up ship than what we last recall. They've got bits of Romulan ships, they've got bits of Klingon ships, they've got bits of Ferengi ships, Bajoran ships. They've got bits of every ship from the Alpha Quadrant all kind of... Uh, stuck on their hull, and are now a somewhat formidable enemy. So Freeman needs a plan, and who's better at coming up with dodgy plans than Mariner? Uh, and uh, with a bit of help from Boimler and also Rutherford, they work out that because the Packled ship is made up of all these different bits and pieces from other ships, its security would probably be very, very low in terms of being able to hack into it. Rutherford calls upon his somewhat psychopathic little friend in the form of Badgie to uh, come up with a um, crippling virus that is going to disable the Packlid ship. Packlids are carving up the ship, they're being boarded, they're uh, going hand-to-hand -hand combat in the hallways, Freeman gets injured, it's chaos here on the Cerritos. So having just created the brand new virus, they need a delivery system to take it to the Packlid ship and uh, infect their computer system so that they'll uh, release the Cerritos. And of course they work out that Peanut Hamper is the perfect uh, crewman to, uh, to to take on this mission. Perfect size, can fly out into space, can get locked docked with the ship, can infect the virus, everything's going to be perfect. Except Peanut Hamper doesn't really care for that plan. Um, she kind of says, no, don't want to do it, don't really want to do it, sounds a bit too dangerous count me out, uh, see you later. So thanks for nothing, Peanut Hamper. So with Peanut Hamper out of the running for the hero role, Rutherford steps up uh, due to his kind of, um, I don't know, newfound <laughs> heroism through all the different modes he keeps activating on his little implant. Uh, he decides he's going to take the virus over to the Packlet ship and uh, install it. So Shax sweeps him up as a security escort chucks him on a shuttlecraft and off they go to the Packlet ship to take it down. So Rutherford's uploading the virus while Shax is uh, fending off Packlet henchmen and he almost gets the virus uploaded but uh, Badgie comes on at the last second withholding the last few percent of the file because psychopathic Badgie wants Rutherford to die a horrible death and uh, is refusing to uh, finish the upload until uh, he's horribly killed. And Badgie sets the self-destruct on the ship and there's no way out of it for uh, Shax and Rutherford, it would seem. Shax has to rip the implant out of Rutherford's head in order for uh, him to be uh, freed of uh, Badgie's grip. Good old Shax sacrifices himself after throwing Rutherford into the shuttlecraft as the Packlet ship is destroyed. But the bad news is the Packlets must have sent out a distress call for help just before they were destroyed and three new Packlet ships 
show up right after they're destroyed and surround the Cerritos. It looks like all hope is lost. The three packlet ships grapple onto the Cerritos and are about to rip its hull to pieces when the cavalry arrives in the form of the USS Titan under the command of William T. Riker uh, with Deanna Troy at his side. And as the Titan comes in, taking the uh, Packlid ships down, the next generation theme swells amidst a barrage of uh, photon torpedoes and, uh, and phase of fire. It's a heartwarming, stirring emotional moment as the Titan kicks a major butt. And it would appear the Cerritos has had to go back to uh, Starbase to get a bit of a refit because it's had one of its nacelles ripped off and copped quite a bit of damage in this battle against the Packlids. Rutherford is in hospital. He's obviously had his implant ripped out of his head. So it's unclear as to whether he's gonna no longer have an implant anymore, whether he'll just be normal or whether he has a new implant. I'm unsure. He's face is all bandaged up so I guess we have to wait for season two before we find out what the case with Rutherford's headgear is going to be and it would seem like a lot of Rutherford's uh, memories must have been housed in his implant because he has no memory of Tendi uh, or anything else it would seem um, which although Tendi is initially disappointed by it means that they can become best friends all over again so she's not that perturbed Next is a memorial scene mourning the loss of Lieutenant Shax. It's a shame Shax died at the end of season one. Uh, he was a really good character, I thought. Hopefully we get a, uh, an equally as good chief of security and tactical officer for season two, but uh, Shax will be sorely missed. There's a great scene at the end here with uh, Riker and Troy in the bar of the Cerritos. Uh, apparently uh, Riker and uh, Freeman know each other from uh, uh, the past. It would seem like maybe Riker has uh, mentored uh, Mariner at some point and uh, maybe that didn't go necessarily as well as Freeman would have liked. Um, and we've got Ransom uh, having a bit of a sleazy conversation with Deanna Troy, asking her to set him up with some of her Betazoid friends. Uh, but she kind of psychoanalyzes him and sort of uh, puts him in his place. It's, it's a cool little moment between these two legacy Next Generation characters. And to finish off the episode, it would seem that Boimler's hard work and effort has finally paid off uh, because He's not getting a promotion to the Sacramento. He's in fact getting a promotion to the Titan. He's uh, added an extra pip to his collar. He's now the rank of junior grade lieutenant and he's wearing a, uh, a new Starfleet uniform, uh, the same as Riker and Troy, as he takes a position on board the Titan. And Mariner isn't too happy that uh, Boimler's taken this promotion. Back on the Titan, Riker comes out of the turbo lift, giving the whole uh, Picard maneuver. Has a nice little reference here to, uh, to Enterprise. He says, sorry he's late, but he was in the holodeck watching the first Enterprise with Archer and crew. Uh, and he said, oh, they had a really interesting journey. They, they took a long time getting from uh, there to here, which was a nice little reference to the opening, uh, opening theme to Enterprise with the musical number. I love the posture of uh, Riker. The animators have completely nailed it with his uh, stereotypical lean and, uh, and, um, and straddling of the chair. The only thing he didn't do was uh, swing his leg over the back of the chair from behind. But apart from that, the animators have, uh, have, have nailed that stereotypical Riker pose. And as the Titan goes to warp uh, to the, uh, the counting in of Riker's uh, jazz ensemble, uh, <laughs> you hear the voice of Deanna Troy going, oh God, no, no more jazz. And as the Titan goes off to warp, we see a little exocomp Peanut hamper float by in space going help. It was a it was a nice little moment to finish off the season Great to see Will Riker and Deanna Troy pop in as uh, two legacy characters I kind of thought we'd be getting one legacy character for our last episode of Lower Decks But we got two characters. So that's a double bonus for us. No, it was great and it was good to see uh, um, The USS Titan. It's the first time we've seen the US Titan on screen uh, and uh, and she looked like a, an amazing ship in action uh, in this episode. So that was a great moment to see. Had some uh, good references to Next Generation in the form of the Packlids, the Exocomp. We've got 
original series references right at the start. It was, as always, pretty uh, jam-packed with uh, little uh, in-jokes and references from the past Star Trek series. Just a reminder, on Friday I've got a live stream uh, happening, my first for a while, with Ket Wolski, the other Star Trek YouTuber. Uh, we're pairing up and doing a special live stream together. Uh, we're going to be talking about Lower Deck Season 1, we're going to be talking about Discovery Season 3, what to expect, what we might be in for, and there's going to be some big announcements uh, and so forth at the uh, New York Comic Con event we'll be talking about as well uh, in our live stream. Be sure to check that out, it will be one not to miss. As always guys, please don't forget to check out my merchandise, uh, link in the description below. Share, comment, subscribe, all, all those usual things, uh, and I'll see you very soon for my next review.